Okay, looking west. You see the wind farm, maybe. Gotta go back on. So climbing back, leaving the Oracle. Right, the sacred, which explains the pair the prayer rugs, whatever they are. Alright, we're on our way to number twelve. Number 12. On this rock wall along the trail is written the story of nature's forces, changing rock to soil. Okay. Alright, so there's number 12. Note the orange and green lichtens. Okay. Okay, we see them. Kind of sunny, but you see, okay, there's all the lichens that encrust the rock. They are the first visible signs of life to gain a foothold on bare rock and requires no soil. Since they secure their nutrients and moisture from the air, though chemical actions, through chemical actions, their roots form an acid which reacts chemically with the rock to form minute quantities of soil. After many years, mosses and ferns are able to take hold in this soil and thrust their roots into the small cracks of the rock. The cracks and pockets in the rock are expanded and gather more soil until grasses, shrubs, and eventually trees are growing where once there was only bare rock. Okay, so there's a tree. Okay. Although this was told quickly, remember that this example of nature's forces work with the unbelievable slowness. The lichens, which get a foothold on the surface of a bare rock, may spread over the entire surface at a rate of only an inch or less in a century. Though lichens are slowly eating away the quartzite, most of the soil in the monument is actually a mixture of gravel, sand, silt, and clay deposited thousands of years ago by glacial ice sheets streams and the wind an inch a century huh and look at that now we know how that shrub got way up there all right on to 13 <laughs> just about out here by myself So taking what we just learned, ooh, there's some more lichen, 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 whatever. But that's it, I guess. And then there's a tree growing out of the rock. Shrubs. Oh wow! Look, when you look at them, there's a whole bunch of it. It's so cool, man. Hmm. All this is is three quarters of a mile. Quartzite. Uh, pipe stone, I guess, is 100 feet below. And you can see benches to rest on. I guess I missed another rabbit or something. There it goes. 
Back in the grasslands. Nice, even, easy trail. Very cool, good spot. We'll definitely return. Doesn't take long to go through either. All right, we're approaching number 13 here. Here is a preserved small portion of tall grass prairie. Tall grass prairie which, prairie which once extended for many miles in all directions. This area is typical of the higher and better drained portions of the tall grass prairie. The colors and check texture change every month, sometimes every week, with a different plant species blooming in full cover, in full color. When the first Europeans explored this area, some species of the native prairie grasses were as high as a horse's head. With the first settlement of the area and the introduction of non-native plant species, composition of the tall grass prairie plant community changed dramatically. In an attempt to restore the native prairie plants, Pipestone National Monument initiated a prescribed fire program in 1971. This program continues today. The objective of the monument's fire program is to restore the prairie to its native plant composition and appearance. Once restored, fire will continue to be used to maintain the prairie, eliminating the growth of trees and shrubs and controlling the dominating effects of non-native plant species. Okay, so they burn the crap out of it. Quartzite. And that's where you go. You have a nice little steady. That's number 13. All right.